What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session. Today we're going to be covering another AoE based build around the 7th enclosure, but we're going to be enhancing a already well known build that many players have created before. This is a build that involves just Code the Juggernaut and 7th enclosure, however, we're going to be adding in some new Elemental World mods and Charge with Light mods to the mix to provide you one of the best AoE midi builds you can currently get your hands on. When Severance was first introduced, I remember the build being popular with Bottom Tree Arc, with the ability to freely activate your power melee as many times as you like. Back then, the idea was great for PvE enemies of lower tiers, but never had a place in the higher tier content or anything else from there. On top of it, the exotic had one of the many turnoffs that players despised, and that was every time you melee an enemy, its effects would occur on your body, rather than the enemies. This for Severance is both okay and off-putting, as you can put the damage in, but it also meant you were at risk of being overwhelmed or taken out from afar. Its passive nature is great for those that don't want to put too much thought into it, but if you decided to build around it, then you didn't have much options available. Now, with the introduction of Elemental World mods and some new Charged with Light mods, I've decided to revisit the build again and see what we can do to improve on it now considering that the exotic trait will now activate on the body of enemies now, compared to before. Now, this build is much more viable for endgame content as you have more options available to protect yourself while doing what you love the most. Risky, of course, but with the build I have for today, we can prevent the many risks involved. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like on the sub as it really does help me out. Starting up with the subclass, we'll be using Code of the Juggernaut to access the Frontal Assault ability, which will empower the entirety of the build and allow us to activate Severance and Closer's trait as frequently as possible. Many, many months ago, this subclass tree was the best tree to pick for PvP and PvE for a super alone, as the perk called Trample extended the user's super for each kill they got. Now, the issue with this was that you could extend it for longer than it should have been by simply using the Shoulder Bash attack which would one-shot the majority of things, and thus become a big problem in PvP. Bungie decided to nerf the subclass and this one effect, and the rest was history. Now, the subclass is still used, but not as much for its super. Its usage now has been swiftly changed to the power of melee hits that can empower you in multiple ways. For example, Frontal Assault will increase both weapon stability, damage, and reload your weapon from a single punch. This will also trigger the reversal perk that will grant you instant health regeneration and will also trigger knockout that increases both melee range and weapon damage. This will also trigger the reversal perk that will grant you instant health regeneration and will also trigger knockout that increases both melee range and damage. All of these subclass perks will link back into Severance as the exotic requires the user to activate it via power melee hits or finishers. The thing about this is that with Frontal Assault, each punch made will be triggered as if you had a powered melee on you, even though your toolbar for your melee may come up as empty. This allows us to practically activate Severance as many times as we like with no cooldown or investment needed to boost your powered melee back. This is great if you're someone who's new to the game and don't have the needed mods yet, but want to still try the build out. Of course, having a charged melee available outside of combat is still necessary if you don't want to constantly punch objects just to activate it. For weapons, we are going to be aiming for a close range setup that will provide the user a quick and efficient method of taking down enemies while not using your melee. Although this slot can be customised to your liking, I have found that an SMG and grenade launcher with flashbang rounds to be the most best at protecting the user. Ignition code with blinding grenades, ambitious assassin and danger zone will all help with stopping enemies movement and allow me to move around easier and find a better way to net multiple kills with my midi in one punch. As mentioned previously in other videos, blinding grenades and danger close can allow me to blind a wide group of enemies within a 5 to 7 meter radius and upon successfully doing so, can allow me to quickly cover the ground from me to the enemies and thus punch them to promptly take them all out or cause them to fly off. I tend to use my grenade launcher as a quick access weapon rather than a weapon I solely rely on as my other weapons and gear can cover the damage area quickly. This doesn't mean you can't use the weapon for damage alone, but I do reserve that for when it's actually needed for that phase. Because of this, I can easily blind a group of enemies within one shot and have a safe passageway available to do what needs to be done. And I have also thought about the effects hurting you as well. Though this will happen from time to time, 
the effects aren't as bad compared to what the enemies go through, as you can still see, but only for a brief bit. As long as you don't fire your grenade launcher in a very close range, then you should be fine. For a secondary, any SMG is viable here, and I would recommend the 7th Seraph, I key loss SMG, or switch your slots around and have a escape velocity, or extraordinary rendition as primaries, and then choose whatever grenade launcher you like in the secondary. For me, I've chosen the Aikios SMG with Seraph rounds, dynamic sway reduction, and disruption break as the primary perks for the build. As an aggressive frame, it will come along with some great damage boosts and can be further boosted once we get a kill with a melee and support and subclass perks. This here will allow my weapon to easily take on major to ultra enemies and put in the needed work, while before using something else, and even then, the weapon is still pretty good without any perks boosting it. I also thought about how I could amplify our primary in the process and found that disruption break is very handy for allowing me to use my grenade launcher with even more greater effects. Destroying a shield with my secondary will weaken said enemy and increase kinetic weapon damage by 50%, but only for a few seconds. Grenade launcher paired with this makes it a perfect combo to use. For heavy, I've chosen to use the crown splitter sword with tireless blade and surrounded. Although the weapon role I have isn't the god roll that many people would agree on, it's still a powerhouse to use against champion or most ultra enemies, as the heavy attack combined with the energy excellent mod can one shot enemies in a flash without needing to use a champion mod. This for end game activities like nightfalls is where the weapon can shine the most as it could do a lot of damage against champions or bosses and quickly breeze through their health like it was nothing. Of course, if you're doing the higher tier nightfalls and need a weapon to take on the anti bio champions, then the Lament Sword is a great alternative to use. For the stats, not much focus is required in practically all the areas, as we have covered melee regeneration in an alternative way and can get instant healing on the spot, which overthrows what our recovery stat offers. Now, although this is the case, we should still make some use of the stats, as I don't really want to leave it there for you nor do I want you guys to feel lost in terms of improving stat points and where to go for. Three key areas I would say are viable for improvement would be Discipline, Recovery and Intellect. Now, Discipline will allow us to throw our grenades more, which will allow us to break up engagement or do some serious damage against bosses when we need it most. For this area, I aim for 60, as this is more than enough to support what we are going for, and with the added effects of the Elemental World mods when active, we will gain a moderate boost to this area further, so no more add-ons will be required. For support, I have added in the Elemental Ordnance mod and Ashes to Assets mod that both provide me extra energy when need be, plus the extra interaction that Elemental Wells will have with Well of Ions. Recovery-wise will be important depending on the activity you play, as this will allow you to get back in action ASAP. I have kept it at 50, as this is more than enough for me to quickly recover, However, I would have boosted this area to 70 to help me counter ranged enemies who are our biggest issues for the build. Lastly, we have Intellect and although this area is tied into Discipline via Ashes to Assets, its effects is going to be tied into one to Finisher mod that will grant us a fully charged melee back from Finishers. This however requires one sixth of our Intellect energy to do so, so there is some risk involved with using our Finishers. For this, the 50 to 80 is the sweet spot for not only faster passive regen, but also allow us to use one to finish them as much as possible when we need our ability perks ASAP. So as we have covered the main topics of what makes the setup, here are the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build. For head, we have discipline, ashes to assets and elemental orders mod. Arm, we have overload submachine gun, unstoppable grenade launcher and well of irons mod. Chest, we have strength. Because of Damner Times 2 and Charge with Light mod. Leg, we have Minor Strength, Absolution, Invigoration, and Reactive Pulse mod. Mark, we have Resilience, 1 2 Finisher, Energy Accelerant, and Overload Wellmaker mod. The build, when complete, can allow users to ultimately go on a melee rampage with little cooldown involved and hefty amount of explosions and other effects to boot. A single melee will grant you health regeneration, weapons, and melee damage. Weapons performance boost, mini range boost, and a large explosion, all of which can be repeated over and over again as long as you proc your subclass perks. But as we are using Severance in conjunction with our powered minis, I also decided to expand on the finisher side of the exotic trait, as this one key area will also allow you to survive for longer and also grant you other necessary buffs. For example, with Reactive Pulse active, 
Every time I'm charged with light and hit by any objects or projectiles, I will shoot out a small AoE burst that will push back and damage enemies caught within the blast. But also, using a finisher will activate its second trait and grant me an overshield to use. This will help when diving head first into a mass of enemies as we won't get killed so easily. We then have the Overload Wellmaker mod and Well of Iron mod and both of these will come in handy when I need an extra boost of melee damage, but only if I pick up the well. Overload Wellmaker grants me 2 elemental wells upon finishers which will grant me ability energy and also activate Well of Irons, which grants us 30% melee damage for 10 seconds. From testing, a normal melee against a red bar will grant you around 7 to 8k per punch. With knockout, that will be 12k per punch. With knockout and ions active, it will push your damage to a max of 16k. This may not sound so high in terms of damage, as this can go much more higher with the right melee build involved. However, this is pretty great for the current build as it will only take us 1, 2, or even 3 punches to take down most enemies, minor to major to even ultras. The extra bonus in damage will go a long way for us to easily proc our exotic with no time wasted. All of this alone allows players to become an absolute powerhouse against all red to yellow bar enemies and you become practically untouchable. This build is great for override content to where all enemies spawn in as you can surprise them with a flashbang grenade and then start punching till the job is done. Strikes, Gambit and even Nightfalls can allow the build to shine as well, but not so much on very high levels. One issue you're going to be facing is that in the high level content, most enemies will be tankier and harder hitting compared to what their other counterparts are. Now you can easily overwhelm enemies and pull off a finisher or a punch for the AoE effects, but this can also be reversed as well back to you, leading into you being promptly beaten to death. This can be avoided if you plan out your engagements and use your melee and finisher when the opportunity shows. One thing you won't be able to avoid that much though is long range projectiles. As the build focuses on close range fights, long range enemies can easily take you out as you won't have no counter to them. Your grenade launcher can help in this area, but this will vary from how far the enemies are. The key disadvantage may require you to think about which weapon you should carry for long range fights just in case. Overall, the build is what many of us are used to when playing a mini role and isn't so much unique to some people if they were thinking they can get more out of the exotic. From my perspective, it's a fun build to play if you're someone who enjoys punching targets to death with explosions happening left, right and centre, with pure chaos involved. However, if you're looking for more in terms of damage and this build sadly won't give you that, but it will grant you an idea as to how to go about it and also you're getting a lot of explosions out of this, like who doesn't love explosions? So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 lore content if you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one.